Hello guys and welcome to this podcast. So this is Twisted Dice and particularly this is Ace Face today bringing you some more tactics. So this will be not the first but one of the first videos um, that I started doing back when I started on YouTube. I did some how to beat videos which were very popular at the time. I left them alone for a, for a long period of time and returned to them on YouTube fairly recently. Um, due to time restraints and the time that it takes to actually edit videos, um, I've decided to go a different approach with it. So I still want to bring you guys some tactics on how to beat certain armies, um, focusing on Tyranids. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them up as podcasts, which hopefully will be useful for you guys. But also I'll put them into a video as well. Obviously the video will just be audio. Um, but still if people like to consume their content that way. Then that would be another way for you to catch up with with what's going on. So um, before I kind of get started. Just a few ways to kind of follow myself um, and the team at Twisted Dice. Um, we have a very active um, Instagram page both on Aceface and on Twisted Dice where I post a lot of work in progress. You see some uh, battle report pictures and some bits and pieces on there. You can also uh, keep in touch with us over on Facebook at uh, Twisted Dice. Um, and again, I post on my own personal Aceface one as well so you can catch up with us there. And if you would like to watch some of our battle reports we have an extensive library of all sorts of different armies clashing um, high quality battle reports and they're over on our youtube channel twisted dice um, which you might even be watching this through or listening to it or whatever um so we put out a video on on youtube every friday um Generally, they, they roll out in the morning, sometimes in the evening, depending on our schedules. Uh, but you should get a battle report every week. Um, dice by dice. Good quality, beautifully painted armies. That's our commitment to you guys. Um, and if you would like to support us further, you'd like to support this podcast, and you'd like to support both myself, um, and you would like to support the Twisted Dice team, we have a fastly growing um, Patreon page um, where you can jump over there you can back us for a minimal cost and be part of our exclusive patreon uh, discord ch chat which is uh, very active lots of people swapping pictures and talking about army lists and tactics and pretty much anything We've got lots of different kind of chat pages within our discord server so whatever kind of interest in the hobby you've got there'll be a place for you there and people that are interested to talk about it um, we also put out our um, battle report lists and some in-game photos and some content that you will only get through our patreon channel um, if you back us to a certain extent you can also get some exclusive dice um, and higher up the tiers you can also get some other three swag you get additional entries to our what will be monthly giveaways once we get enough patrons on board so lots of exciting things and things to do over on our patreon um, if you want to support us further but anyway, back to this particular broadcast. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Tyranny Tactics and how to beat. So if you're interested in these videos, I have got um, I've got my first one that's actually just a standard YouTube um, uh, video, which is How to Beat Knights. So if that's something that's interested to you, then jump on there. Um, but today we're going to focus on how to beat the menace that is the orc green tide um, and hopefully this will be interesting for you um, because they are a challenging army um, for us to deal with um, because in many ways they are quite similar to to tyranids so they have you have the swarm effect um, so they have units that can be taken in great numbers 
um, that you know can take up a lot of board space, can be quite aggressive. They have very good combat units, um, which so do Tyranids, believe it or not. Um, so they they kind of match us in that part. Um, they also have some good strong shooting units, um, which we're lacking a little bit, but we do have some of a similar type of uh, shooting element in our armies. Um, we have um, big monsters, and so do orcs in the form of their gorgonauts. Um, and actually, the war bosses pretty much, I suppose, form a little bit of that that task as well. So, in lots of ways, the there are a lot, quite a lot of parallels between the orc and tyranid army. Um, so, when the two armies kind of clash, you're going to find that um, you're going to have to be quite tactically sound to be able to to have the upper hand. Um, and that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about today. And first and foremost, I want to kind of uh, acknowledge that I would say that Orcs is a better codex than the Tyranids codex, which in itself is one of the biggest challenges because whereas within the Tyranid codex, we competitively are only able to sample from a few key units the Orcs actually have an incredible strength and depth throughout their codex. So that gives them the ability to be able to field lots of different style armies, whereas we're a little bit more restricted in what we can build to be truly competitive. So bearing that in mind, how do we beat them? So quite often the best way to, to build very competitive Tyranid armies at the moment is to go with a gene stealer heavy list that attacks the enemy quick and head on and uh, and depends on on not only killing troops really effectively and you know medium um, and elite troops as well and and medium armor uh, but also what it's very good at is it's very good at congesting space on the board it's very good at tying up units and stopping them from moving away because of its immense speed and the shenanigans that you can do with stratagems uh, to allow you to, to wrap up things to protect both the gene seeders themselves but also other units. Um, so that's one of the strongest ways of building a Tyranid army um, and that is building Kraken gene stealers. Um, predominantly people are using them with the Swarm Lord um, but ultimately the plan is you bomb these guys up at the right opportunity, then you'll do one of a few things. Um, if you've got the opportunity to um, to kill a lot of stuff, you'll do that. But predominantly what you're looking for is you're looking for afterwards to secure the gene stealers by wrapping something up or having the ability to then have space and a area where they can then hide and then they'll run off into cover out of sight and survive for another turn to do similar tactic again the next the next turn. So that's the general gist of the um, of the gene stealer tactic. Now the problem with that versus orcs is quite often what you're doing is you're hitting a big block of boys, um, you know. Or if you're not hitting boys, you're hitting um, Gretchen which are protecting the boys, which are then going to be behind. And probably unlikely for you to be able to... Um, uh, for you to be able to sort of go into those boys if they're being well protected by the grots. So, quite often what you don't want to be doing in this matchup is you don't want to be sacrificing those gene stealers. And the main reason why you don't want to be doing that is because the gene stealers are a lot more expensive. So you're getting two orcs to the price of one gene stealer. So the maths just does not work and does not add up to be charging your uh, your your gene stealers into a much more disposable um, unit or close to a disposable unit. You also have got to bear in mind that you don't want to be 
you know, trying to wrap orcs because they fight so hard. So trying to wrap orcs is going to be a mistake as well because then they're going to hit you back and you're not going to be able to wrap them because they're going to kill you. Um, so that, again, does, doesn't does work. Um, so if you're going to use this style of tactic, what you're going to need to do is make sure that if you're if you're going into that front line, you have the ability to stay well clear of the boys um, or be able to hit them in an area where you're going to collapse a whole unit and be further enough away from another unit to be able to safeguard your, your precious gene stealers. Or predominantly what you want to do is be able to hit either a unit of boys or the target that you're after and be able to finish that combat further enough away from anything else that you can then dive away into cover and cause them some issues that way. So if you can't do that, the best thing is not to throw your gene stealers forward. What you want to be doing is holding them back and waiting for the orcs to do a similar task on you. So what you want to be doing then is screening yourself so when those orcs do, because the orcs generally they're gonna that's what they'll do. They'll throw themselves at you. They won't camp back, they won't um you know, their their style, they have much more disposable troops, um, and they have the ability as well that if you don't kill them all, they're gonna come back. So for them, what they're gonna wanna do is they are going to want to come at you because they're going to have multiple layers of this threat, most probably. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making sure that you have a safe screen around the stuff that you do not want the boys, boys to charge. So either that is um, termagants, pr- predominantly because they're your kind of the cheapest way of doing this, or hormigants, um you can also use spore mines, so the um, meiotic spore mines, the uh, forge world ones are the best way to do this because what you can do with those is they will have an opportunity to take up space on the battlefield before the game begins because they have almost like a infiltrate rule. Um, and if you position them, you don't want to be positioning these right forward, you want to be positioning these almost as a secondary screen, stopping the orcs from being able to get within nine inches, so either deep striking in through their teleporter or being to jumped in. So important to do that. And so looking at your screen to make sure you've got that got that screen and there is nothing nothing wrong with potentially almost tempting those orcs into so if they're going to go because the thing what they'll probably do is they'll jump one unit in the first turn um and what that means is that that unit is going to be on its own for the first turn um and then you can dispatch that unit so if you can manage to tempt an orc um big you know mob of boys to jump into your lines and to take out your screen then that's not a problem because what you can do then is with your gene stealers or whatever you've decided to take which we can go through in a bit more detail can then dispatch those orcs because a unit of gene stealers with you know maybe a little bit of support from a bit of shooting from your army before the gene stealers go in will generally take down a unit of 30 boys without too much trouble Um, so you might want to pick off a few of them but that's not going to be too difficult because um, you know you're going to have some pitter patter shooting that will be able to deal with a few of those boys before your uh, gene stealers go in but a max unit gene stealers pretty much will destroy a unit of orc boys um, so they will not be able to uh, survive Uh, But you obviously want to make sure that happens. Don't leave anything to chance because you don't want them all coming back. Otherwise, that's your game plan, game plan gone from the start. So once you've taken out that unit of boys, then you want to be reforming your um, screen. So you want to be thinking about that. So almost as you're um, positioning yourself to deal with these orcs, you want to almost be putting a secondary screen um, around your gene stealers and around anything else that you need to kind of secure because then what you're doing is you're then tempting them to do exactly the same thing and you're going to do exactly the same thing again. Now, they'll probably learn by that and they won't do it the second time, but then you've just gained the upper hand because you're 
you're controlling then the tempo of the game and and how you're going to push up and forward. So that's kind of a way to, you know, if you're going to use your kind of basic tactic and your basic army list. So if you're, you know, at the moment, probably the strongest list is still, you know, two to three big units of gene stealers, maybe even four if you're feeling very fruity. Um, Swarm Lord, um, some Hive Guard, some characters to both buff and to give you the minus either with a Malanthrope or you're taking um, Venanthropes, whatever it might be to make sure you've got the minus. And then you're looking at maybe the Swarm Lord. Old one Eye is a good one to have in there. And potentially you're, um, you're maybe looking at potentially some Gene Stealer Cult allies. Um, or if you're going to go pure, you're just looking at, you know, maybe some more characters just to kind of buff yourself out a little bit and give yourself some more threats. Um, you know, so these these are sort of things that you'll probably see in your kind of top tier Tyranid list currently. That's kind of the way that's and the lists that are being most successful. You've got some sort of secondary tier units like the Carnifexes. Um, you know, they're in some lists. People are starting to take a few warriors in there. You're seeing um, Termagants um, spam. But generally, the main kind of lists are still tend to be revolving around gene stealers because they are such an effective unit if used correctly and at the top tier. So, um, so if you're using that list, that's something to bear in mind. So, don't you you can't default to your normal style of playing that game because the orcs will beat you on it because they just have the greater strength in depth. Um, you know, so so just bear that in mind. Um, you also, if you're taking that list make sure you have got your gene stealers well hidden so they're not going to get taken out by looters in the first turn because that will obviously be something that uh, your opponent will be looking at doing um he will know that that they they are they're probably your biggest threat and they'll want to deal with them the two things that they'll probably go after is they'll go after swarm lord they'll go after the gene stealers um so if you can hide swarm lord and you can hide your gene stealers then you're actually in a pretty strong place but uh that's not always possible um but you know bear bear that in mind bear that in mind and uh depending if you've i mean if you've got the um uh the swarm lord you know, in he he might survive the looters, um, particularly now they now the new FAQs in place and they can't be more than fifteen to get all the buffs, uh, because uh, you can only you can't mob up anymore. So the fifteen man unit will need to be you know bad moons and we'll need to roll the three three shots probably. Uh, I can probably do it on two, but basically needs to roll the three shots, needs to shoot again, and needs to do more daca. Um, to be able to kill a swarm lord, so um, your swarm lord should survive. But they're probably, if they're sensible, they're not worrying about the swarm lord, and they're going into the gene stealers if they've got the chance. So they're the ones you really want to hide because they're gonna they're gonna make sure that they uh, they do the business for you. Um, so if that's the issue you've gone for, that's something to bear in mind. That's the way you want to be kind of deploying. That's the way you want to be tactically going into that game, um, giving the orc player the opportunity to come at you um, and then picking him off um, is the best way to deal with it. Now, if you are looking at ways to, you know, go outside slightly from the maybe the meta and, you know, you're playing against um, people that play orcs quite a lot and you're struggling with them, um, some tips and tricks on how to build a army that will beat orcs effectively. So the first thing is I would recommend is go back to the tried and trusted. So flying hive tyrants are very, very, very good against orcs. Um, you want to be arming them up with the double sets of the twin link devourers. That's 24 shots. 24 shots is really, really good at strength six, hitting on freeze against orcs. Um, you are really going to get through those guys ever so ever so quick with, with that amount of effective, reliable shots. Um, you will almost certainly have range on them pretty much first term um, because... They have such ball presence, the Orcs, they have struggled to kind of stay out of range because they'll want to put some of their key uh, kind of shooting units a bit further back. So the boys are going to be further out unless they are deep striking. Um, and even things like grots and stuff that you want to clear off for grot shield and stuff like that, the tyrants are going to do so effectively. So, um, 
you know, I would advise at least one, but maybe two or three flying hive tyrants. And this is if you want to really just go after, I want to beat orcs. Um, they, they are really, really effective. Lots and lots of shots. Um, and they're able to chew through orcs so, so quickly. Um, they also are susceptible from getting countered by those losers, as we've just said. Um, but that's why you're not just taking one, you're taking multiple. Um, you need a little bit of luck. But, you know, there you go. That's that's kind of what, you know. And actually, if you've dispatched, you know, one, if not two units of um, Orc Boys, um, which, is, to be honest, is statistically unlikely to get through two, but you should kill one, um, you're, you're, you can afford to lose one Tyrant. You know, it's not the end of the world. Um, so, but of course, don't 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 try and be defensive enough to give yourself the best op- opportunity to survive if you can. Um, and don't spread your fire too much. Make sure, as always, you kill a unit dead. But they're very very good. They'll also obviously you've got some psychic powers there. You've got some you know got some got some good stuff there. So you're going to hold some ground, you know, you're going to, you know, sit in the centrepiece and you're going to put some serious work into the Orcs. That strength six is also great for dealing with pretty much anything they're likely to have in their list. Um, the only thing they'll struggle with is Gorkonauts, um, but anything else that strength six is going to be perfect for. Orcs don't have good saves, so it doesn't matter about the... Um, doesn't matter about the lack of any AP because you're just not going to need it in that matchup. Um, so orcs, so against orcs, those tyrants are going to be invaluable to you. Now, some other ways that you can you can do really well with them is uh, swapping your normal flesh borer termagants with some uh, devil gaunts. Again, uh, three shots each from those guys. They can you can either drop them in via a transite um, and that has some huge benefits against orcs anyway um, which we can go through but also it gives you them the ability to be right where you want to a unit of those will do some serious work into orcs as well um, you know we are still taking into account that the predominant predominantly orc builds are going to be you know 150 to 200 models so you are going to be looking at swarm as their as their biggest weapon and there are other orc builds there but what we're looking at here is how you beat your typical orc player how you beat orcs in general um, and in general they will be taking horde so that's kind of what you want to be thinking about so so yeah those devil gaunts will be really really super super handy um you want to be making sure you've got them you also want to make sure that you have got your big big um minuses to hit so that might sound really silly against orcs because they always hit on sixes, but actually hitting on sixes is a big difference between hitting on fives. That sounds obvious, but it's it's the truth. Um, and you want to make sure that any unit that is going to really try and hurt you is using that um, is using that more daca um, and is not managing to just hit natively on a five plus. So the more that you can stack those minuses to hit, the better. Uh, your orc, your Tyranid army is going to be at surviving any amount of shooting because when orcs shoot, they do shoot lots. So shooter boys are a very effective weapon. Uh, they will kill kill a lot of stuff quickly. Um, you know they're going to kill gene stealers really effectively. They're going to kill your gaunts really effectively. Um, you don't want that to be the chart. You don't want to be that to happen. So you want to make sure that they are hitting on sixes rather than fives. So um, those those minuses to hit are also really really good for you. Um, I think there's there's a good good um, argument to still take those hive guard. The hive guard are going to be great for taking out any high strength target that the orcs are going to throw at you. Um, they'll still do very very well. That multiple damage is going to going to get through a lot of stuff quickly. So as much as they're not they're not necessarily they're not going to be the stars of the show in this matchup. I think they're still a strong value to having those. Uh, because there will be some chunky stuff that the orcs bring and you want to make sure that you've got the tools to deal with them um, and because they're 36 inches they'll be pretty much prime territory for where those orcs will want to be first turn so definitely something to to consider but as i said the tyrannocyte is something that is normally pretty poor um 
you know their their poor ballistic skill means that they're not incredible but the ability to throw something where you want it to be to shoot a lot of shots at those um at those orcs is one thing but also they come with quite a lot of daca so you arm those guys up they'll drop in and again everything that gets through is probably killing a boy and that's what you want to be doing you want to be very very quickly taking their numbers down um, again focusing on one unit at a time do not spread your fire unless it's against Gretchen um, and you want them to lose and you want them to break from leadership but apart from Gretchen you pretty much want to be focusing on killing one unit at a time and making sure that you're focusing through that and that's that's very much the the, the tactic to go for um, and then you can overcome them so they would be my big tips um, they'd be my big go-to units. You want to be looking for multiple shots, low AP. That sounds obvious, but actually Tyranids have gotten access to enough of them. Card effects is, again, with two sets of twin link devourers. is not a bad shout. And you want to be layering. So you want to always be thinking, the Orcs probably want to be getting to me more than I want to be getting to them. So think a little bit more defensively than you would against some armies. Think about making sure that you've got things safe from any long range um, looter shoot shooting, but also that you've got the ability to um, to hit them with a counter attack. Um, and that way you should be able to overcome them. You know, Orcs are a great army that I would say they are stronger than Tyranids. So you have to outplay them. So you have to outthink that player and you have to play it tactically the head-on fight you will lose so think that as you as you get to that table you're not going to beat that orc player by just hand to hand you're going to have to outsmart him and you're going to have to outplay him so start thinking that from the off and that will put you in a better position to be able to succeed in that matchup so hopefully guys that has been useful um, and that's something that you uh you are going to find helpful in your games. So thanks very much for watching, for listening. Uh, please do, you know, put that five star review or or the thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, and I will be back with another How to Beat real soon. Thanks for listening, watching that stuff. Cheers. Bye for now.